What's going on YouTube? This is Necro Stevo, and we are back with part two of the Generations Battle Pokemon battles that I didn't get to put in the last half that I didn't record live, of course. Um, a few more really interesting matchups here. Uh, once again, seeing Xerneas definitely going to lead uh, Rayquaza Aegislash. This time my opponent manages to catch on pretty early, which is directly out into Rayquaza just to get the Intimidate off. Generally a good move. Um, not quite going to save it from the double team, though. Uh, having Sableye on my opponent's side of the field, I am very wary of Sableye, especially alongside things that can use Earthquake. That's going to be Salamence and, of course, Groudon. Uh, I just went straight for the double target on Xerneas like I, I normally was doing. Uh, Salamence can live the plus one Dragon Ascent, but it can't live the double target. So we're just going to blast it with the Flash Cannon as well, and that's going to be the end of Salamence. Uh, that's just been my general way of dealing with that. And except for one or two battles, it worked out pretty well to do things that way. Now with gravity on the field, of course, all of my Pokemon will be susceptible to Groudon's Precipice Blades attack. Uh, I can block that with Wide Guard, which is pretty nice. Um, and Dragon Ascent, since I figured I'd be protected from the attack for this turn, I just wanted to go ahead and hit Sableye really hard, but I really don't do that much to it. Um, and unfortunately, instead of attacking, I let him get a free wide guard off, which sucks. And he also does a ton of damage and knocks out my Aegislash with a foul play. So that turn just did not go as I really wanted it to go. I thought for sure he may try burning me. Of course, Rayquaza has the Lumberry for that situation. I just didn't expect to, to deal with things in that order. And so here he does go for Precipice Blaze, and now that he has plus two, I don't have anything that can take that. Um, that's just hitting too hard, generally. Um, I can knock him out, though, as my Evil Tall manages to live the hit. Uh, I am able to knock him out just because he's so strong at that point. Foul play plus the added 30% from the Dark Aura. Very, very nice for finishing him off, for sure. Um, but unfortunately, this means that now I'm going to have to come back in here with my Rayquaza and get hit by a Dazzling Gleam, which sucks because I cannot take that with Evil Tall's remaining HP. And of course, I can't even Sucker Punch the uh, Sableye because it's not it's using a non-attacking move. So I tried to at least knock out um, the Xerneas here. I didn't think Sableye had anything beside Foul Play, but unfortunately, the Dragon Ascent plus Earthquake combo is not enough to knock it out, and he's going to be able to take that battle. But that was a pretty good match. I think I played that as well as I could have. I guess I overpredicted when I used Wide Guard when I did, but that seemed like the most sensible spot in that battle to use wide guard in my opinion. If I had been able to keep that back in my back uh, pocket there and use it on the next turn, that would have definitely played out differently. Now in this battle I saw that my opponent had Reg Ice and I wasn't sure how to deal with that so I decided to lead off Aegis Slash so I could hit it with a uh, Steel type attack. He sees that and immediately switches out into Groudon which is pretty annoying. Um, we still are going to see gravity users again in this battle. This time it's Meowstic supporting with Gravity. Um, I just don't have a good way to break through Regice. Regice's special defense is at base 200, and that's just too much generally for these Pokemon to muscle through, uh, especially when it has support from me and Shao and Screens and all that good stuff. We are gonna go ahead and set up Trick Room here um, in an opportunity to try to get some priority going. I didn't really wanna get hit by a desolate land um, so we're gonna see if that goes any better, but of course the gravity kicks into effect. I don't do that much at all to Meowstic with Moonblast, and the Precipice Blades is gonna take out Aromatase with a critical hit, and we know from earlier that the critical hit definitely mattered, because uh, Aromatase has taken Water Spout from um, Kyogre in the rain, so there's no reason why I shouldn't take Precipice Blades when it's not even boosted by any means. But that's neither here nor there, as I always like to say, you gotta deal with what's in front of you. Uh, I did not expect him to go for Reflect on this turn. That sucks. Fortunately though, Y Guard does block Precipice Blades. I'm able to get off a decent amount of damage with Earthquake on, you know, if you combine the damage I did to both of them. It's not bad. Unfortunately, Earthquake cuts down the damage so much that it's like, man, it's not even really worth it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and switch out Rayquaza and go back out into my own Evel Tall just so I can avoid sucker punches and all that good stuff. Uh, I go for a wide guard again. Uh, I'm not really sure 
why I went for it right there, actually, now that I'm thinking back on this battle. There was no reason for me to go for a wide guard at that time because Evil Tall doesn't really get very many spread moves. I guess it wants to go for Heat Wave. I'm not really sure. Uh, my opponent actually makes the type of move that I did in a previous battle, if you guys saw the last video, where he accidentally attacks his partner. Not, not a fun thing to do where you obliterate your partner Pokemon who's trying to help you out. Um, he does activate my weakness policy as I get paralyzed trying to flash cannon him. That's a little bit unfortunate, but eh, it's not going to matter anyway just because we're dealing with Regice. Um, I don't even get a chance to King Shield here as I get paralyzed again and I don't get to protect my Aegis Slash. Very annoying. And now my uh, he manages to hit a Blizzard just to add insult to injury here. It's a Blizzard without there being hail up or anything. So I really need to hit this thing hard if I'm going to take it out. And unfortunately, he my opponent realizes that and definitely protects it as Evil Tall just goes for foul play and hits my Rayquaza very very hard. So we are going to go just for the double up on the Red Ice one more time. I was hoping I could finish it off, but it looks like he's very, very heavily defensively invested on physical defense, which is unusual for it, because he's able to live a Sucker Punch and a Dragon Ascent. Dang it all. I would have loved to take that thing out right there, um, as my opponent lowers my special attack yet again, and I'm just not going to be able to take um, another Blizzard without the Dragon, the Delta Scream up. So that's going to be the end of that battle, but that was the only time I faced Reg Ice, I believe, so... My opponent has some really a creative use for Regice in that battle for sure. Now in the next battle, uh, I actually ended up going against Sylveon for, I think I only faced Sylveon once during this whole tournament as well. And facing Sylveon alongside Garchomp, that just spoke to me of spread type attacks. And so I wanted to lead off with my uh, Aegis Slash, but at the same time I knew if I went ahead and let off with Rayquaza, then I could beat his Rayquaza to the punch, hopefully, is what I was trying to do. We're gonna go ahead and switch directly out into Aegis Slash to hopefully take the um, Fairy-type move a little bit better. Uh, and at the same time, I hope to knock out his Rayquaza. A lot of Rayquaza are adamant. Mine is Jolly, so typically I can outspeed them. Uh, we both Mega Evolve our Rayquaza, and that's great. Everything is, there's a lot of fervent wishes reaching our Pokemon. Just, Please, hear my wish. I'm opening up hundreds of fortune cookies just so I can get this thing to evolve. But he just goes straight for Dragon's Ascent and demolishes my Rayquaza. So that sucked. Um, definitely being Life Orb and uh, Adamant is the only way he can do that. So he might have just had a better speed IV than me because I've definitely lived Dragon Ascent before. But that's okay. We're going to come in with Aromatisse here not really worried about any move that either of them are going to go for now because uh, now I can get a Trick Room which will be super duper useful and also the Earthquake activates my weakness policy so now we have a chance here to really turn the tables I get an opportunity to blast the Sylveon but it protects itself that's okay now that the Trick Room is up I don't have to worry about Rayquaza using extreme speed against my Aegis Slash because of course it's going to be protected by its ghost typing um, and of course I can blow away his Rayquaza with my Aromatisse's Moonblast. And then I can really blow away that Sylveon with a fantastic plus two stab, super effective, shiny, like armor all flash cannon. Really very satisfying blowing that thing away like that. Now that we see uh, Kyogre and uh, Garchomp come out, I am expecting the spread type moves. Uh, I, didn't, I just didn't know which, if he was just gonna go right for them or not. I was really hoping that Moonblast would KO Garchomp, but it looks like he's a little bit more invested. Um, I'm really proud of the damage that I was able to get on the Kyogre. I even get the special defense drop. Um, I think that that was a good trade-off overall, uh, especially if he wants to... Now I have Evil Tall left, and as long as I take out the um, Kyogre, there's basically no way the Garchomp can beat me one-on-one. -on -one. I and mean, I still have my Trick Room up, so I'm going to be faster. Uh, he does have the minus one special defense drop, which ensures that I will be able to pick up that KO. And just that rock slide is barely a two hit KO, and that's before I use Oblivion Wing. And of course, I had one turn of Trick Room left, so even if he protected, I would have been sitting pretty well there. So I'm able to pull out that victory just through uh, kind of playing around what I expected him to bring or her to bring in this instance. 
Now in the final, the unfortunate final battle, we see my opponent bringing Mewtwo, Metagross, Gengar, and Groudon. I think in this battle they had just a lot of killers. Um, just all really offensive Pokemon. Uh, but after seeing Mewtwo and Gengar, I really wanted to start off with Evil Tall and Evil Slash because I could put on that pressure with Sucker Punch and Shadow Ball. I was very happy to see Mega Mewtwo Y, because that allows me to Sucker Punch it right in the face and not really have to deal with it, which is great a lot. That's why I just like Mewtwo X more. Being part fighting means I don't have to deal with Sucker Punch weaknesses. I also get a chance to go right for Shadow Ball just to hit Gengar, bring him right down, and he's not going to be a problem for me at all in this battle. So. Taking out two of my opponent's Pokemon that quickly, very, very useful. Now the thing about Metagross, of course, it used to resist dark type attacks being a steel type, or rather just be neutral. Um, but now that it is no longer neutral to them and it's actually weak, foul play is a fantastic tool to use against Mega Metagross. Um, I am just going to protect my Aegislash here with King's Shield because there's no sense in, I don't know, risking it in that manner. Uh, he does a lot of damage with that uh, weather boosted uh, eruption, but I'm able to take out Metagross before it does anything, and I am a quiet nature, Evil Tall. So we're just going to protect the team here with another Y Guard, because I don't think that Evil Tall can take another one. And not only will Y Guard allow me to protect myself, but since he's going for eruption, I'm going to lower the damage of it by lowering his HP. So on this next turn here, we're just going to go for Oblivion Wing and a nice Shadow Ball to hopefully clean things up. Uh, even if he goes for Eruption, which he did, it wasn't enough to knock me out because I took out that chunk of his HP on the previous turn. Uh, so, plus two Eruption's gonna clean it up, and that's actually gonna be the last battle that I had in the Generation Showdown. So I hope that you guys enjoyed watching my participation in this event. Up next, of course, will be the February International Challenge League, which I was sick for the majority of, but I will have some battles for that for your enjoyment. So I hope you guys have a great day. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye now.